be honored and be swept. Well, it's a very humbling experience, to tell you the truth. Um, you know, I didn't come here to play to the statue, you know, after I was done. But uh, so it's very humbling, and uh, uh, you know, I just uh, my comments on the mention a few things about uh, that teammates should be involved in this and be thought of also when they look at the statue. So it's a humbling deal. <laughs> how, did you, how did you play, you know, when the sculptor decides to do this, how, how did you play a role in that, and what was it like? Well, I really made it tough for George. Uh, I, I really didn't, uh, you know, I, uh, um, I, you know, I really, really wasn't for it. I mean, I, how, how can I, you know, insist on anything? He did an excellent job. I mean, I helped him a little bit, but not much. Research. It's amazing uh, what they have to do to make these uh, statues. As far as getting it authentic looking, I mean, he's trying. He's asking me, do I have my shoulder pads? And uh, you know, well, uh, shit, the shoulder pads are under the jersey. What difference? I, no, I don't have them. The, the funny thing is, I. Well, it's not funny. I, I wore my Illinois helmet for the first year or two with the Bears, and I wore those. Shoulder pads, which Paul Shady here, the equipment guy, designed, and I wore them till they literally rotted. Uh, in the first four years with the Bears, so uh, I, naturally I didn't have any of that stuff left over. So he, he did his own research, and uh, you know he did a great job with uh, Grange, and uh, I'm sure he did a great job with uh, with, with mine. Dick, uh, how has the game changed since you played until what it is now? Well, uh, <clears throat> you know, I, I don't know. It's just uh, with all the rule changes, it's changed the game. Uh, you know, they like to see the offense, and uh, you know, although you know they threw the ball uh, a fair amount of times when I was playing, when you had guys like Bart Starr and Unitas, uh, Tarkington, and all that. But it just seems now it's more emphasized on the offense. And, change of rules it's you know I guess they like to see 59 to 58 games versus you know 10 to 9 or something I don't know I just uh, I have a tough time watching it to tell you the truth with the antics doesn't see it seems like a me world out there on the field like it is in America it's all about me so I think they're losing what the hell the game's about it's a team sport not individuals you know, in the old days, when you would, you know, jump up and do a cartwheel after you made a tackle and you're losing 48 to nothing, you would be taken care of by by, by your own. No one's going to be showing you up. But uh, of course, it's different now. It's a business, and you know they got to tend to their business. So uh, more power to them, I guess. Jim, what did the University of Illinois and Champaign do to you? <laughs> well, that's the start. High school is one thing, but uh, choosing a university to go to after your high school career is over uh, is a big step. And uh, I guess I made a good a good step, and I I, I guess I can thank uh, Coach Bill Taylor for that for recruiting me here. Uh, it's not only just the university or, or and the coaches that you're involved with. Uh, it seems like. Get involved with the people of Champaign and Urbana. Met some wonderful people. And so, uh, to tell you the truth, I mean, I mean, it's, it, it wouldn't be a bad place to, to live, you know. Uh, uh, so, I, I have, you know, good feelings about Champaign and Urbana and the people here. Uh, so, I was just very fortunate. <laughs> we changed, changed the a losing program to a winner, and uh, all you can ask, it really worked out well. You had your number retired, inducted in the Hall of Fame, got the statue coming up. Which one of those honors maybe surprised you the most? Uh, well, I, I, 
guess would be the number and the, and the statue, you know. Back a number of years ago, I mean, it just seems like it's it's more in vogue now to have, like at the United Center, you got Jordan and uh, all the hockey guys, and in LA, you got all them guys, all the basketball players, and uh, so, uh, I don't know, it's, I guess it's kind of, it's gonna be there a while, I guess. Uh, I know George put in, had to put in a lot of extra steel in the one leg that, uh, whatever, I guess there's a standing on one leg. So uh, those, you know, a lot of guys don't get hurt if they're hanging over it or hanging on the thing, trying to bend it off, I don't know. But uh, I guess the statue would be because it's gonna be there for a while. Did you mention you're gonna talk to the team this week? Just what's your message to them? My message is no message. <clears throat> I don't speak to teams no more. And that was because when I had the number of retirement, they wanted me to talk to the team. And I said, well, I want to talk to the team. And they got beat 66 to three, I believe it was, by Nebraska. So I'm not very good at it. And I know the Bears, Maggie, wanted me to talk to them. I just don't do it. You know, it's, it's different. What am I going to say? Uh, you know, I can't, you know, I, we, we came here, it was a losing, a losing team. I think they lost 15 in a row, but the coaches recruited certain guys and, and we turned the program around. So what am I going to tell these kids? You're in the same situation I was. You know, you can get your ass beat, but you can let them know that, you know what? They're, that's a hell of a team. They come after you. They might not have the quality of players, but they go after you. And the reason I say that is because at the Pro Bowl, and at the college all-star game, I would have opponents come up and, and you know, our, our sophomore year, what, we won two games. Yet, some of those all-star guys at these Hawaii, the Hula Bowl, and the Shrine game, they said, you know what, we hated to play you guys. I mean, you weren't worth a shit, but we knew we were gonna get our ass knocked off. And, you know, that's kind of a tribute, at least, you know you've been in the game when you play us. I don't know if they feel that way here. How much are you able to watch the team that's play now? Are you able to watch them play, play a little on TV as much? Uh, you mean Illinois? Yes. Uh, they're on sometimes, yeah, I, I catch them. Uh, when they're on the Big Ten channel or whatever. Uh, yeah, I saw the last uh, couple games. Yeah, I'll watch them, yeah. And then I try to watch whoever, uh, whatever teams have some of our Butkus nominees, our uh, watch list. And uh, so I'll, I kind of, because I, I have nothing to do with the voting, I just take a look to see how these kids are doing. I think what's your relationship like with, with Lovey and what, how do you think he's done with, with this job here? Well, he's done what he can do, I guess. Uh, I, I have, you know, I met him when he was with, with the Bears and I met him here and you know Lovey, he's a very quiet guy. He's got a tough job ahead of him. You know, it's like I'm going to mention about, you know, kids don't like to come to a small program. I mean, a losing program. You know, they may not, you know, whatever, whatever the reason is. But I, I, I and I don't understand that because, uh, granted, you know, you want to be on a winning team and all that, but wouldn't you get as much excitement and uh, fulfillment of turning your team around? You know, that's. That's what I remember back. We turned the damn losing program around. We should be proud of that. So, uh, again, I don't know. You know, it's a business now, so I don't know what to think. Dave, is there something you'd like to be remembered by or you want fans to make sure they know you know about you outside of your accolades on the field? Not really. You do what you gotta do. I mean by that, I, I met a very interesting guy, I don't know, maybe six or seven years ago, and uh, he went by Secret Santa, that was his name. He's a guy that at the end of the year, uh, around Christmas time, he'd go out and wherever there is a tragedy, he would go and, you know, hand out money. Like we, so he called me and he asked me to go with him. 
So we went to San Diego. You know, and the people were there living in tents after the fire, lost everything. And he'd come up with his white jumpsuit on and a red hat. Uh, talk to him a little bit, give him a couple bucks and leave. He didn't want to be known. He, he had a he had a Kansas City Star reporter and photographer. They begged him to let to go with him. And they and he says, You can go with, but don't ever show my face and you do not tell who I am. Thus Secret Santa is his name. So <clears throat> So I said, traveled with him a couple, uh, five years or six years. Guy ends up getting cancer and dies, but uh, he taught me a lot about about giving. And I mean, there uh, the stories that we we would come across with people, and I just thought he was so neat of a guy. He was homeless. He started out homeless himself. Uh, I'll tell you real quick. He he, he was. He was uh, in Mississippi and he was going to come to Kansas City to visit his sister and he was living in his car for a while so he said well I'm going to go in here in this cafe and have me a good breakfast I got no money what is he going to do and then I'm going to steal some gas and I'm going to drive out to Kansas City so he goes into this place and Ted Horn is the owner in Bruce Mississippi a little cafe and he goes in there and he has a big breakfast and he's having his coffee now and he's thinking do I run out of here or how the hell do I get out of here and uh, so just then Ted comes from around the counter and bends down and he pulls up a $20 bill he says here sir you must drop this and he goes oh yeah yeah right and so he pays <laughs> and as he's walking out he says Lord if I ever make it it's payback time so he goes to Kansas City He's selling magazines or whatever, and he's uh, he's got about 500 bucks in the bank. So he goes to this coffee shop one morning, and there's a homeless woman there. And so he reaches in his pocket, and he pulls out a 20. It reminds him, he puts it back. He drives over to the bank, waits for it to open, and he draws 250 out of his 500. He goes back and gives it to the homeless woman. And she says, no, 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 sir, you don't know what you're doing. He says, no, no, that's all right. From that day on, everything he touched turned to gold. And he, he did this communications deal that was, I don't know how much he made, but so then he started giving it back. So I was traveling with him at the time. So we go back to Bruce, Mississippi after Katrina. We're doing, uh, after Katrina, doing some work there. So we go back to Ted Horn's place, or he did. I actually went to Ted's home, uh, his house and we had breakfast that one year, but he, he went back to the, to the restaurant, he walks in there and he's looking around and this Ted Horn's still there, the owner, and he, he says, hey, you recognize me? The guy's looking like, I don't, yeah, I don't know, maybe, why, why would I remember you? Think? He says, well, he tells him the story about the 20. He says, what do you think that $20 would be now with uh, with interest and all that? And the guy says, I don't know, basically, what you're talking about. So he rips off like 10 grand and gives it to him. And Ted is like, Geez, <laughs> and so the following year, he had, we go over to Ted's and he made the same breakfast that uh, Larry had when he was in there, when he was going to run out on the tap. So that's the kind of guys I, I you know, I really, he was a real eye opener for me. And uh, so I try to carry on a little bit. And just, uh, you know, no one needs to know what you're doing. You just try to help people. When you got started playing football, was there somebody that kind of empowered you or inspired you or something like that? Well, maybe my uh, maybe my brother Ron. Uh, I was the youngest of nine kids, you know, and he he was he uh, he was here for a while at Whistle Stop training camp or whatever at Illinois, and so I, I kind of looked up to him a little bit. And then of course he he knew Nitschke and my sophomore year in high school, I think we came here and. For spring game and Ray was here and Ron and my brother introduced me to Ray so I started following Ray uh, a little bit uh, but I just uh, I just had that self-motivation I think I just when I watch <coughs> people or whatever uh, whatever they did wrong I said well I'm not going to do that I'm going to turn it around because that didn't help them do this and do that High school uh, in Chicago, which allows you to go to go to, to the school when you're not in their district, and 
line that we grew up with since kindergarten. He says, hey, they got, they got a good coach over there, Bernie O'Brien at CBS. I said, let's go, we're going. So we got to the city championships uh, two years later. So everything was geared for me. I was very fortunate. I knew I was tunnel vision. I knew what I wanted to do. And uh, and I lucked out. And I uh, was able to do what I wanted to do up to a certain point. sign to say it's over so uh, that's why I'm not you know I try not to be so macho with the cane because I got this neuropathy and it, it's like I'm drunk all the time <laughs> without drinking and believe me that's not fun I'd rather be drunk and I'm uh, you know it's uh it's tough so I gotta look like I'm 80 years old here since Roy Grange is statue up people now like talk about be me to me to grab you know like they do a measual statue of St. Louis, feet of red. They're gonna probably do the same thing with your statue. It's kind of like that idea, idea of it. People uh, coming to see your statue. They're gonna, they're gonna come, I don't mm -hmm. quite understand. What do you mean they're gonna I come? I mean, people come and meet the statue, you know, as a place to meet your- Oh yeah, that'll yeah. be a sign poster, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's meet at that statue. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be cool, yeah. <laughs> from what you've watched with the Illini this year, any of the guys stick out to you, do you like the way they play? Well, it, it's, it's funny, you know, certain guys stand out in different games, it doesn't seem like they're putting it all together. You know, that's the only thing I'm worried about. Uh, you know, and then with Peterson, I don't know, is he gonna be able to play tomorrow? I don't know. Uh, it'd be good, to, it'd be, that's too bad if he don't, because, you know, Michigan. But, uh, yeah, not, not really. I. I uh, you know, you, like I said before, I try to watch the, my linebackers. Uh, you know, it's real hard on TV. So I just, like any other fan, I just sit there and watch the game as, it, as it's presented by the TV people. So, uh, you know, some guys, have, like I say, some guys look like they had great games, and then the next week uh, you can't find them. Dick, what do you have to say to linebackers who were maybe inspired by the way you played? Well, Tell them, you know, get on with your life, buddy. You know, <laughs> they're playing now. They're thinking back to my days. Uh, uh, you know, it's just like at the Hall of Fame. We, uh, you know, we have our luncheons and we talk, you know, only to play. I mean, and I, I, and I just, uh, when Erlacher got in and uh, Lewis got in the same year, I just, you know, and then Lanier picks me out to talk or something. I'm like, God damn it, I don't know. <laughs> so I, I just said, like, you know, all you other guys, you're all probably wishing you'd be linebackers, but we know they can't be because you got to be a great athlete, and a, you know, a linebacker. You got to do so many things, and so they're all like in the eye or whatever. Some of the running backs and whatever, but uh, I don't know. Linebackers, I just think is well. At least it was in my time. It was fun to play. Now it's it's getting so specialized, and with the, you know, with the passing game and everything else, you, it's very rarely you see. Uh, like a middle guy, like like this Cal kid, uh, Weaver. He looks like an <coughs> old school middle linebacker guy. Um, but a lot of them are like on the corners, you know, like like uh, Cleo Mack. You know, he's supposed to be a linebacker. Come on. Um, but he's good. He's good. So he can be called a linebacker. <laughs> when you mentioning Mack, that Bears defense went through a rough stretch. How excited? How, how exciting is it for you as such a great defense well, player to see like them back at that level? It's just like anybody, you know, you, when your when your team starts winning, you know, all of a sudden you, you know, you're kind of uh, raised from the dead. Um, you know, everybody jumps on the bandwagon. Hopefully they're doing good, and then when they're in the playoffs, you know, you're on the sidelines there and everything else. Well, where the hell were you when <laughs> they were struggling? So we all jump on that wagon. So. You just wish the best for for uh, the, the teams that you played with and that you follow. And you know, I, uh, when people ask me about them, I thought, well, they're, they're not going to surprise anybody, and they got a really tough schedule, so they got to be really lucky with injuries. And uh, uh, you know, but Trubinsky goes down, and uh, you know, everybody's bitching about the quarterback, and you know, so everybody is able to find a find a reason to get on their case. But, 
to say about it. I think they just kind of almost went ahead with it anyway. <laughs> you know? uh, well, it, it, come on. I mean, yeah, but, what? You know, someone, you know, if they wanted to put you a statue of you for a writer or whatever you do, I mean, well, how do you feel about it? Oh, I deserve it? <laughs> you know, maybe the kids today would say it, but I, you know, uh, it's very a humbling deal. And, you know, and you wonder, you know, why, man? You know, I, I did what I thought I was supposed to do. And I, you know, I, shit, I had fun knocking the shit out of people. You know? <laughs> so if it was that unusual, I guess you, you take it, you know? What do you do for fun these days? If you got a spare hour or two to kill, are you a, a pickleball player? Do you play tennis? Do you, how do you no, I can't play, I can't play golf. I'm a, uh, I'm a, uh, I guess I'm a, a big fan, uh, and my new sport is volleyball uh, because my grandson uh, he plays for uh, UCLA, and uh, he's six nine, about two forty five. He'd, he'd love to play football, but <laughs> my daughter uh, saw that movie Concussion, and that was the end of that. <laughs> <laughs> and he, so he had hit a concussion playing volleyball, and gets hit in the head. So anyway. Uh, <laughs> So I go to his game, uh, he's 6'9", his uh, girlfriend who plays on UCLA's team, she's 6'7", and uh, they make a nice couple, 6'7", six, 6'9", six, and so we go to their games, and then uh, his younger brother, uh, he's just turned 15, and, and he's about 6'5", now, and uh, he's going to be a volleyball player also, so that's my new sport, volleyball, and in fact, uh, we're thinking about going to the game tonight. I was going to tell him, you know, you can pack 10 people here and see how we really play the game. <laughs> <laughs> Luke uh, sent out a really interesting photo. I think it was of your childhood home, if I'm not mistaken. Um, where was that on the south side? Well, what streets was that on? What are your earliest memories of, of that kind of homestead that your family had? 324 South Low. Yeah. It was, uh, uh, you know, an expanse of 700 and some square feet. House with, and, uh, with nine nine people living there, but, but we went back there. My brother Ron and Don, we went back there, and of course they got an argue who slept here and whatever. And there's a there's a stolen cement mixer engine buried under the ground here, and now they put a concrete garage slab on there because it was you know dirt. And I always tell the story about my my brother. You know, you think I was tough when I was a kid in the garage and, and he is since he's a you know steel fabricator welder and everything else that's what he used to do but I was a young kid and I was standing by him and then he was in the garage we had a dirt floor in the garage and he had something in the vice and he was soldering it <clears throat> and all of a sudden I'm smelling like burnt chicken feathers <laughs> and I'm looking I look down and he's under there I mean he's doing the soldering with bare feet and the lead or the the, 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 the the molten, melted steel is flicking off his foot. And he's like, get, you know, like he was being harassed by a gnat or something. <laughs> and I'm like, what the heck? Smoke and everything? I mean, you talk about a tough guy. And uh, he should have played. He played in high school, but he fell in love. And that's, everybody's got their deal. And that was wrong. <laughs> 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 yeah, that. We got time about one more question. Did anybody, anybody else for uh, the, the guy like the one thing in your era of the trail, the linebacker, you, Nitschke, Burrell, yourself, there's others, the uh, Axe and Hanson and others during that era. Is, is there a pride factor about being in that? Well, group? I don't know if they're. You know where it came from, but you know Pirelli, uh, Tony Pirelli, and then you had uh, Nitschke, of course, and uh, we had some good ones. And then you know we, you had back-to-back uh, -back, uh, Illinois guys, Howard, and then win the Butkus Award. You know, which caught a lot of shit from the Southern people. <laughs> like, oh, it's fixed. I don't vote for it. So, 
so it was, and uh, you know, everybody was, I was talking about these other schools, other linebacker schools, I said, you know, the Illinois isn't too, too bad itself. So, uh, so uh, to end the year, I just, uh, I, you know, our flight was canceled yesterday, and we didn't get in until three in the morning, and all, you know, 14 of our family, so I might be under the weather here, a little pissed off about something, but uh, get over it, as they say. So, I uh, appreciate you coming, and uh, write good things. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.